what LLMs are you all looking towards next, respectively, to help solve for your clients or for your own work? And what problems, I, I know you began to touch on this in financial industry, but, but what problems aren't being solved using LLMs that should be or can be at some point? Uh, the Federal Reserve is very concerned about data security. So one of the things that limit a lot of the things we can do is we won't allow the data to go outside of our you know, virtual networks that we have in the cloud. And that stops us from, for example, for using something like the OpenAI's uh, APIs, which I would like to be able to use because they have some of the best models. So now we use ones which you can uh, download and control the data completely, such as the ones from Meta. And other companies are doing it as well. And I think that's a big issue for anyone that has data security uh, worry. Uh, security is one thing, but even just control. Right, so I also see the, even the trend towards on-device sure. LLMs uh, that are more doable uh, today. But I would bring up another meta issue or meta problem here, which is every week there is some new launch, there's some new model, a new framework, a new toolkit, new buzzwords, some of them rehashing the previous ones. So the bigger challenge is either for ourselves or for clients, how do you keep up? Because whatever you deploy, in three months will be obsolete by the time you deploy it. So um, we're looking to kind of the frameworks for more of the orchestration layer of how to handle all of these and basically to focus on what doesn't change. So certain workflow components, and you know, there will still be a decision at the Fed of certain, there's certain, certain steps will be taken regardless how it's done, right? Or, or portfolio manager will follow certain steps. Um, and stick to that and just think, think how to plug in all the latest and bestest. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, imagine you're relying on one of these for signal detection in a trading system, and they change it without telling you, and now all of a sudden you're not making the same profits you were. So you need to be able to control the models. And that's what I think you were referring to. When you download them, you can archive it, and you, it doesn't change. But then, of course, you need the skill sets and the yeah. sophisticated people to, to be able to maintain that. Yeah. So I think actually uh, I, I echo the, the point that, that you made. I think building a level of abstractions between, uh, between the LLMs and the use cases so that you can manage it effectively is, is paramount to actually build it everywhere. In fact, the way that we are thinking about it is that it is not just a model. It is a tuple of the model, the prompt, the context that you give it, and also the guardrails that you need to build around it. And you need to manage this, uh, this, uh, this tuple as a, as a, as a, as a whole. Uh, by the way, another thing that I believe it is not being fully solved uh, today, but we are moving towards actually solving it uh, fairly well within the next few years, are these concepts of agentic workflows and these, uh, and these agents that they can ultimately reason about which part of the task is done, which one it is not, and they go on independently uh, kind of getting, getting it done. So, I foresee us uh, seeing a lot of innovation in that, uh, in that area within, within the next few years. No, I'll just add in here is like, um, you know, when we are talking about the whole control aspect of it and safety aspect of it, especially it's, it's, uh, it's more applicable to large enterprises. Um, I, f I see all those enterprises and many of them are already going in direction is having very opinionated architecture. And this is for the agility purpose. And as we spoke about, it's like things are changing much faster than, you know, than any of the previous technologies. So we have to just, if everyone imagine in an organization is doing their own thing, and if regulations are changing, new governance is changing, or just, you know, the underlying model is changing, uh, it will be very hard to, make changes or keep up with them in that case. So it's, it's very important that there is a framework kind of thinking, there is a centralized model where you know the whole organization can move together in, at much faster pace for any change yeah. absorption. Yeah, data, simple databases are going to change. I think one of the things which hit me uh, as a surprise and started me thinking is I read an article recently uh, that LinkedIn had to change some of their um, ways they're using language models and GPUs because they were actually using uh, that type of structure to match people with jobs. And start to think about that, you mean they're not using a database, and they're sort of not anymore. And it's morphing. The concepts of what we're calling a database is morphing in the vector databases and beyond that. 
and it has to change the way that the GPUs work internally to make this efficient. And before you know it, the whole concept that we have of a database could completely morph into something else. And then the dependencies, so when you talk about, you know, we talk about the, uh, say, RAG depends on data, but those agents that everybody's excited about this agentic future, the agents will depend on RAG. So we can see the potential issue, like if we jump too far ahead without solving the basic structures. Absolutely.